What's up, y'all? <laughs> In this video, we are going to talk about how to spice up that resume. So some of these, you might know all of them, some might be great reminders, but since this is kind of like job hunting season. I really want to offer you all some tips and reminders. So I hope you enjoy this video. This video is sponsored by, you guessed it, Privacy. Thank you so much, Privacy, for sponsoring these videos. Privacy allows you to create unique virtual cards that you can use when you're online shopping. So your personal debit card information, all of that, stay safe. I've been using Privacy and loving it. So everyone that signs up for an account and it's free, Privacy is totally free, you get $5 added to your account if you use the privacy.com slash mayabello URL. Let's just jump into this video. So what you really need to focus on is that under your work experience or under your projects, you really talk about what you did, what languages, tools, or frameworks you use, and then what the impact was. You need to include all three of this for each project or each work experience that you have on your resume. And by the way, if you do not have any work experience, so work experience can be like internships or any like full-time roles that you have that are software engineering related, that is totally fine because projects are your place to shine. And that's actually something I really like about software engineering. Not having that like work experience won't kill you if you have some like fire projects under your belt and I think that's something that's really cool but yeah touching on those three things for each work experience or each project is key so for example a lot of people work on a personal website as one of their projects and you want to just say like created a personal website to practice web development like that would not be a good thing to put on your resume. You definitely want to go more into detail. So for example, created a personal website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then after that, you want to talk about the impact. And I actually think the impact is out of the three, the hardest to talk about, just because you want to kind of choose a metric that people might be like, ooh, or you know, like a metric that's kind of cool. But for example, if you're just starting out, a metric could be like, I get about about 10 visits to my website per month or another metric could be something about performance so increase performance on the website decrease load time for the website by uh, using different images or refactoring code you know something that's related to your project but yeah you definitely want to mention all three for that if you worked with the team definitely mention that as well and then talk about what you personally did but the second thing I want to talk about is the skill section make sure you have a skill section when it comes to your resume because recruiters can easily see if you have experience in basically the roles that they're trying to fulfill you know let's say it's an app making company a web making company a game making company they want to see that you have experiences in those languages because they're trying to fill the roles you know and they want to make sure the person they pick will do a good job so for me I listed out all the languages I knew in my skill section however I've seen people list tools frameworks, libraries, languages. So like list what you want, but just basically make sure you have that section because I think that's so important. For me, for my languages section, I basically listed it from proficient to least proficient. I know some people actually put like Java proficient, JavaScript proficient, assembly beginner you know like sometimes they organize it like that just do it in a way that you feel comfortable any language tool framework you put on your resume is fair game however i found in my experience usually people want to talk about the language i know best or when they ask about assembly i'll be like oh i took a class on that i worked on this project i just tell them a little bit about it and they're fine with that but they usually just focus on one language you know really well when it comes to like the technical interview and all that but Anything you put is fair game, so just know that, make sure you know something about that language and you're able to speak on it. So as I said before, this video is sponsored by Privacy. I just wanted to shout them out before I get to the last tip. And Privacy is really cool because you can create these virtual cards that you can use when you're doing your online shopping. Why I like Privacy is that sometimes I wanted to buy things, but these websites were looking kind of sketchy. And I was like, dang, I'm, I'm trying to support, but I don't want to put my 
debit card information on these websites. So that's where privacy comes in because you get this unique virtual card number that you can use for that purchase. And you can also have reoccurring cards as well. So for example, let's say on your Netflix, you can have a reoccurring card that you use. You can cancel cards whenever, you can pause cards, you can create one-time use cards. Like privacy is so dope. Thank you so much for sponsoring my channel as well. I really appreciate that. And the last thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to your resume, is that formatting matters. I hope this isn't an old school opinion, but I really think things like making sure your resume has no typos, making sure it's like no spelling mistakes, the grammar is correct, making sure that the formatting is consistent throughout. You know, I've seen some people use paragraph and they go to bullet points, then they go back to paragraphs and I'm just like, this is a mess. <laughs> you know, make sure that you use the same thing throughout. I would say other things like don't have too much white space on your resume. It can make it look empty and just really making sure that it looks very clean and professional would be my advice. They have some websites where you can get templates, but I have usually just use like free resources to make my resume. Just make sure it looks very clean. When it comes to the objective section, I mean, if you feel like you don't have enough space, take out the objective section. I don't really think an objective section is necessary unless it's like very specific to you. Usually with objective sections, if you can go to like five other engineers and they completely agree with your objective section, it means it's kind of generic. However, there's one that's like so specific to you. Like let's say you used to do nursing and you're switching to software engineering and a lot of your resume maybe has some nursing stuff that's related. Maybe it might make sense to have an objective section to say like switching from nursing to coding so that I can build software for hospitals, you know, like as long as it's very specific to you, it's fine. But yeah, those are all of my tips. I hope these are helpful. Thank you so much again to Privacy for sponsoring this video. Remember to use my URL, privacy.com slash myabello to get that $5. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. This was so much fun and I'll see you in the next one.